Hi, my name is Mr. Ford, and I'd like to take you on a journey through history. Michigan forest history is filled with lots of exciting things, and there's some danger as well. Wildfires, courageous acts, devastating defeats, you know, the good kind of stuff. So let's get started. When the first Europeans came to what's now Michigan, most of the land was covered with trees, lots and lots of trees. When Michigan became a state in 1837, almost all of it was covered with forest. Pine forests were incredibly valuable for their wood, so much so that some people called it a pot of gold, green gold. When the forests of the eastern United States were used up, timber companies hired landlookers to find valuable forest land in Michigan. Landlookers surveyed and mapped the forest so timber companies could claim the very best trees. Logging camps sprung up all over Michigan. Lumberjacks lived in these camps while they cut down trees. Lumberjacks would work in teams to cut down huge trees. These men were called sawyers and they would work together with a crosscut saw to bring down giant pines and cut them into logs. It was tough work. Logs were dragged or skidded out of the woods by horses. It was done in winter, so the logs would slide easily over the snow and ice. When the rivers and streams were high with melting snow, men with pike poles would help guide the logs down the river. Sawmills were built right along rivers where they could be reached by Great Lakes sailing ships. Sawmills cut the logs into lumber for building. Many Michigan cities, such as Grand Rapids, Muskegon, Manistee, and others, grew up around sawmills. Lumber was loaded on sailing ships and carried to Chicago and other port cities. The pioneers used Michigan lumber to build farm communities and cow towns out west because the western states had no access to pine timber. Thanks, partner. Soon, all of the trees that could be cut around Michigan rivers were gone. So special railroads had to be built to bring logs to the sawmills. This also meant that logging could happen not just in the winter, but all year long. While pine trees were being taken for lumber, hardwoods were being cut down to fuel the new iron industry in Michigan. Still more land was cleared by farmers who wanted to plant crops. Soon, most trees were gone. Michigan's pot of green gold was almost empty. And there was another problem, fire. Fires burned the grass and the tops and branches that were left after the trees were cut down. Horrible wildfires swept through Michigan, some caused by lightning, many caused by man. These fires burned out of control. Towns and homes were destroyed, and many people died. And some animals that use forests as their home disappeared from Michigan. The woodland caribou, the fisher, and pine marten are just a few examples. By 1900, Michigan forests were all but gone, and many doubted Michigan could ever recover. But some would not give up hope. In 1903, the state forest reserves were created, protecting many of the trees that were left. And Michigan's first forest nursery was established at Higgins Lake. This nursery grew seedlings to transplant in many parts of Michigan. And Mother Nature was hard at work too. You see, some trees, like aspen, grow back naturally after a fire. So they were some of the first to come back. But fire was still a problem and new trees were vulnerable to wildfires. In 1920, Michigan formed the Department of Conservation to begin a firefighting detection and prevention program. They built huge fire towers to keep a lookout for wildfires. And in the 1930s, during the Great Depression, the Civilian Conservation Corps was formed. This government program hired out-of-work men to help fight fires and create miles of fire breaks to help stop fires from spreading. They also planted trees, thousands of trees. The federal government also helped by buying two million acres and making it protected national forest land. Today, private landowners own about 60% of Michigan forests. 
Many of these landowners have helped Michigan recover by being involved in forest management programs. And many loggers go through special training to learn how to carefully harvest trees. Because so many have worked together, government, companies, and families, our forests are coming back right. so there can be green gold in everyone's future. And wildlife that left Michigan has returned. Yay! Looking at Michigan's forest history teaches us an important lesson. Our forests have been badly abused in the past, but if we make wise land use decisions and are careful with fire, we, our children, and our children's children can continue to work and play in the forests of Michigan.